Hi guys, welcome back. To anybody who came here for a hit piece on Chandler's wildlife, I'm sorry to disappoint you. That's not what I'm about to do, but I promise you this is much more important. I am going to show you a clip of something he said that is pertinent to what I want to talk about. We'll get into all of that in just a second. But for right now, I'm John, this is Prince Zuko, and you're watching Tipping Scales. Okay, I want to let you guys know I'm not going to show you any more clips of what happened at the Holy Thursday Massacre. We've all watched that enough times and it's just not good for us to keep watching it. If anybody needs to watch it, we all know where to find it at this point. So I'm not going to keep replaying that over and over because I don't think we need to see it again. So let's talk about Chandler's wildlife real quick in relation to all of this. Again, I don't mean this as a slam on him. Chandler has an exhibition, exhibitioner. Well, let's be honest, he is a little bit of an exhibitionist. He has an exhibitioner license. He got that caveat that he was allowed to keep his animals because he puts them on display. But there are many people like Chris Coffey and Bill McAdam who do not get to keep their animals. So I want you to keep that in mind while we watch this next clip. And I also want you to keep in mind that Chandler isn't saying this because he is a bad guy. He's saying this simply because he trusted the wrong people. And that is a trap that any of us can fall into, and I think most of us have at some point or another. So I'm going to play two clips back to back. The first will be Chandler, and the second will be the reason he said what he said. Some of these influencers and whatnot, these poor people are so stressed right now because they're believing everything that everyone's saying, and they think their animals are going to be taken away when they're not. They're not. Like, come on, guys. <laughs> It's gaslighting to get money from people, and it's gaslighting to get us to attack the government. So no one's telling you 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 have to go get rid of your your uh, your pet or euthanize it. No one's gonna from the state's gonna take it away from you. No one will need to give up their pets. Their pets are their pets. They will continue to be their pets. I'm showing you guys those back to back to show you how important it is for us not to get complacent when it comes to everything that's going on in Florida. But what we need to talk about today is that FWC is actually coming for all your pets. I know it sounds like a scare tactic thing. I know it sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's not. FWC has proposed a whitelist on what animals you can own in the state of Florida. Each species has to be reviewed by the FWC before they okay it and most of those species are likely already banned. So what this is gonna end up doing is it's going to destroy the market down there. There will be no more pet trade in Florida. This applies to birds, tropical fish, reptiles, anything not native to the state of Florida. And again, I know you're probably thinking, no way, man, that, that can't happen. But it is coming and they're pushing for it. And that's why we gotta speak up at this meeting. May 5th, Friday is the last time you can submit a comment online. So if you haven't done that yet for the meeting, please do that. If you've already done that, go back and add something about the whitelist because they're gonna be talking about it on the 11th. And this isn't something that's only gonna affect the people who live in Florida. Other conservation offices look to Florida to see how far they can go with their regulations and how much pushback they're gonna get. We need to give this as much pushback as we can, respectfully and professionally, of course. So I'm gonna show you a quick clip now between the stakeholders and the FWC at the tag meeting that was held a couple of days ago. They do this before the commission meeting to talk about what they're gonna talk about, get a basic idea. The commissioners are not present at this meeting. USR Florida is in there pushing hard. Other stakeholders are in there pushing hard. The folks at the FWC just do not care. So I'm gonna show you this clip and hopefully this gets a fire in your belly to wanna do something and leave a comment for the meeting, which again, I will link that in the description like I did on the other video. And if you want to learn more about leaving comments on that meeting, you can check out this video right here, how to participate in the meeting and all of that. It's important that you check that out soon though, because again, May 5th, Friday is the last day to submit online comments and May 10th and 11th is the meeting. So here's the clip. I'm going to let this play out and we're going to end the video. In with our chairman, um, um, Chairman Barreto. And the chairman has indicated that he really does want to see draft rules at this commission meeting and that he wants to see both of the options that we have discussed with you previously. The first option that we discussed applies to non-native fish and wildlife species that are not documented in commerce in Florida 
and this would restrict importation of any new undocumented species. So species currently in commerce would maintain a regulatory status quo unless a future risk determination necessitates reclassification. All right, so um, just to recap what the section op second option was, it applies to non-native fish and wildlife species that FWC has not evaluated for risk in Florida and FWC has determined are not sufficiently regulated. This option restricts importation of any unevaluated non-native fish and wildlife species. Species that have been evaluated would maintain the regulatory status quo unless a future risk determination necessitates reclassification. So that's the option that we presented on the slide last time for option two. At the last tag, there were interpretation one and two. Um, I just was wondering if there was a reason for that nomenclature change or if there, if it's going to change at the commission meeting to option instead of interpretation. Yeah, we will use option um, for the commissioners. Is there a reason for that? Or just that's no reason? Okay. The number of species that have been evaluated is about, if I recall correctly, the number at the last meeting was 205. And I'm not sure which estimate we're using for species and trade, but we're at 30,000, 40,000, somewhere in that area. I'm not sure if even that 205 has been analyzed by FWC. Those may only be FDACs. So I'm assuming that it's even less than 205 species that have been reviewed by FWC. So we may be looking at 20 or 30 species that have been reviewed by FWC, and most of those are probably already listed as prohibited. So it could be almost zero species that are going to be allowed in trade. And as Joe just said, the commissioners need need to hear those numbers. So just to clarify, both options will be industry killers. One is just quicker than the other. Adamantly do not support option one or option two. We are also against both interpretations, um, even interpretation one, and I do want to make sure that that's clear. I'm going to have to change my concern about interpretation one, interpretation two, whatever you want to call it. I'm a big hell no. We went from these were two interpretations of what we thought the commissioner said to now these are two options that we are presenting to the commission. And that's that's why this is getting such a behemoth pushback here is that everybody feels like that was a little bit of a bait and switch that we were told these were just interpretations and now there are two options being presented. There was at least as much support for a third option, uh, which would be an expanded blacklist, as there was for either of the two options that we looked at uh, and, and discussed at the, at the previous meeting. What we were discussing previously, that low-risk species may be authorized to be imported, but there's a caveat part to that, provided that no other factors of concern are identified during the initial risk screening conducted by FWC. So I'm listening to Sarah talking about all these scientific reviews and everything else, and then she falls back on her caveat, despite all the science, peer review, risk analysis, assessment, screening, all of that stuff. The caveat is if FWC, despite all the science, if we don't FWC like it, we're going to not allow it. And so, you know, that's not a good faith gesture. And then are there going to be FWC inspectors that come to fish farms now and, and spend, uh, how long would it take to go through Seagrest in a day and identify every single fish that's in there, even though there's a, you know, there's a label on it. It would take me hours and hours to go through there. And I know fish really, really well. So I, I would um, request that anyone, you know, at the, at the last meeting that brought up this concept of a blacklist, would really like to hear specifically, what do you mean when you use that phrase? What it means to me is a list of species that are disallowed or species that are allowed on a conditional permit only to be sold out of state only because to enforce you can enforce, you know, a few dozen species that that the agents can easily identify or you can whitelist thousands and thousands of species that they have to identify which are the ones that are not allowed. So currently under current law, you cannot possess piranha for any reason. But you can possess something that can be contained, like a freshwater stingray, and that can be contained and shipped out of state only. But FWC 
with a conditional species permit, make sure that the containment is proper for that animal so that it can't reach the natural waterways. I just want to make sure I fully understand. So I think for you, the phrase blacklist could incorporate, like, for example, current conditional regulatory classification, current prohibited classification, or something like the piranha, which is kind of a unique case where it's almost completely not allowed. You know, what is what is uh, acceptable, what is not. It's going to be very difficult for the officers to determine what species we've seen in the last month the pretty significant problems that law enforcement can have with identification of things like boas and and uh and pythons and, and we had the same concern expressed by major burden a couple months ago at a tag meeting that a extensive whitelist would be extremely difficult for law enforcement to to be familiar with a lot of species that look very similar it's it's possible for an officer to come in and say that they they don't believe that's the species on the whitelist. They think that it's a species that's not on the whitelist. Um, and the concern is that you know you'll have officers euthanizing animals and by mistake because they don't understand which one it is. And so that's that's a big concern there. Where they have been implemented, whitelists have been wholly ineffective at preventing the release of non-native species into the environment. Whitelists are industry killers where they have been implemented. And the people on this call and the people within the industry want to protect the environment, but we're going to be put out of business um, by this. Whitelist is going to lead to more mistakes from law enforcement. Um, your agency is going to have more, more situations arise like what we just saw with Bill McAdam. And I know nobody wants anything like that to happen again. Having, having uh, something other than a blacklist of things that should be easily identified, it, we're probably going to see that come up again. All right, that's it. Again, if you guys didn't understand exactly what that's about, FWC is proposing a whitelist. They want to ban all species except for the ones they've reviewed, which is not many species. And of those not many species, many are already banned. So take day geckos, for example. How many species of day geckos are there? There's going to be some species of day geckos that are banned. It's that crazy. So you guys know what to do. Link in the description. If you need more information on the meeting and how to participate, I will leave that video in the end screen for you to check out. I'll also leave it in a comment down below so it's easy access for you. Try to keep your heads up. It's some crazy times. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye. So it's very important that we... <laughs> Glasses, snake. Oh God! Listen here, shiny. Zook.